All right, in this video, we're gonna expand on our getting data from web series and try to get some particular data from a website, some piece of text or some piece of information, a number, something like that. So in one of the videos, I was showing you how to get something from a table, but what if you wanted something that's not really in a table? So to do something like that, I'm gonna use this Yahoo Finance website in this particular case, and it doesn't really matter. I'm gonna use this as a popular website example. It's probably not the way you should be getting prices or anything like that. There are better ways, but you know, as an example, I'm gonna use this. So what I'm gonna try to do, I'm gonna try to get the price for the stock right here. See this 207.74, that number from this page. To get to that number, first I need the link to that web page. So this is that web page after I searched. So it did some things here with parameters after the question mark here, as you can see on top, hopefully you can see that. But I'm gonna remove all of those parameters right there and just keep this clean like this. That should still hopefully work. Now I'm gonna try to go grab this number out of this page. So this is gonna be quite a long journey to get there because Power Query currently doesn't have a way to search by a class or an ID or something like that. It seems like these features are coming up, but as of right now, we have to do this the long way. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna just copy that link, I'm gonna open Excel, go to my, again, Power Query, depending on your version, hopefully at this point you know where it is. I'm gonna go under data, and do from web in our get and transform section. Or if you have the add-on, you'll go to your add-on tab and find it here. So I'm gonna paste the link right there and hit okay. So this is what I'm gonna get. I'm gonna connect to this. And remember, it's looking for tables by default. These are some tables. I don't want tables. So I'm gonna click on the document itself. So if I go to this transform data, we have to basically navigate through this node system. And the way it's gonna work is basically our HTML tree. So if I open this Firefox and just right click and inspect element, See, it's gonna give us the tree here. And if I scroll all the way up, see the first one is HTML in this tree. We need to basically go through all of these nodes here to get to that one that has the price in here. Now I'm gonna go here, see this HTML is right now the one that we're on. This is that HTML. And what I can do, I can click on this table thing right here. And when I click on it, it's gonna go inside of that HTML. And see, inside of that, it finds head and body. And if I go to my inspector here, see, inside of this HTML, if I just close this main thing, see, inside of HTML, we have head and we have body. That part is gonna be in the body part of this page. So now I'm gonna click inside of body in this view and open the table, what it's called for the body. And it's gonna be inside of that. Now you can see how it says div, div, and then some scripts and then another div. Now I'm gonna go ahead here and open the body. And apparently that's, there's an iframe, let's close this. So there's div, div, there were some scripts, right? And there was another div there. So there is apparently this display none, which seems like it doesn't show up. But anyway, let me just try to find which one it's supposed to be in. So it's doesn't seem to be in this one. So let's open this div app. Yeah, see that starts highlighting it. So that's really the first div in that tree. So I'm gonna go back here and open the first one table. And basically I have to keep doing this until I get there. So see now it says there's just one div inside of it. So there's one, so I'm just gonna go in, but basically it said there was just one div inside of that one and there is also just one div inside of this one. Let's go check our tree. So there's this div 
and if I close this, see there's just one div inside of that, that's correct. And inside of this, there's also one div. And inside of that new div, there is gonna be what seems to be three of them. So let's go check. I'm gonna go back and open the table. And there it is, three of them. In this three, it seems like, see when I highlight this, that highlights the background, so that's the first one. So I'm gonna go ahead and open the first one out of there. That opens that. Inside of that, it seems it's just gonna be one div. I'm gonna go inside of this too. Let's go and open that. Inside of this, there should be just, see, one div. That's correct. I'm gonna open inside of this. Now inside of this, see that one seems to be the second one. There are four of them, but we need the second one here. So I'm gonna go here and find the second div. There it is, just one. So I'm gonna open this one too. And again, there is just one. So when there is just one, you can just keep clicking on it. But here, I just wanna show you, see there's this div, there's just one inside of that. I'm gonna hit this, there is just one inside of this again. So when I open this, apparently there are one, two, three, four and that fourth one five actually but the fourth one is the one that's highlighting that area in the background see that has the number in it so i need the fourth div so i'm gonna go back to excel this is the one that was just one i'm gonna click on that now we need the fourth one one two three four i'm gonna click on the fourth div Apparently there is a script and there's div. That's gonna be div one on this one. Let's go just check this out really quickly. So on this one, see if I open this, there is this div and there's a script. We just need the div. We're gonna open that one too. And that's just gonna have one div in it. We should open that too. I'm gonna go and do that. Let's click on this table and that table too. Apparently there's just one, I'm gonna click on that too. And then we should have apparently two, I, I think two because this one says null, but we'll go and check. So here I'm gonna open this one. Let's minimize this so we can see what's going on. So that's just one, that's correct. I'm gonna open that, let's close these so we can see all the ones on the same level. So apparently one, this was probably that empty one, two and three. See that third one, when I select, it highlights the actual number there. That's the one we need. So the third one, there it is. So inside of that one, there's just one. So we'll open that. And inside of that, there's just one. We'll open that too. And then there are three of this. So let's see. So inside of this, there's just one. Uh, where is that one? I think there was this one and then there is this hopefully I didn't make a mistake there but there it is inside of that div see there is this span span and div I think that's what I was looking at the last time so let's go check it out so let's go here see span span div cool that looks good that seems like matching this one span span and div first span See, that's the one that gets the number in it. So I need the first one from that list. So the span, I'm gonna open the table. And there is the number. Hopefully you can see the number. I'm gonna open this thing. That's that 20774. So now out of all of these, I just need to keep that text thing. So I'm gonna right click and remove all the other columns. That just gets us the number, so basically you just keep going through that HTML tree until you get to the element you need and then we grab the text. And now to load this back to Excel, I can do close and load and close and load and that should just load this back to Excel. Hopefully if we give it enough time. Let me just get rid of this uh, magnifier really quick here. All right, and there it is. That's the number. So we pull that number out of that web page. So let me just close this thing. So that web page URL, just to refresh your memory, was this. 
So this was that web page URL. And as you can see, it's basically like this thing right here that goes until here. And then we have the stock APL. So that's Apple. Uh, I'm gonna go here and create a small table just to take this to the next level. So we're gonna say stock. So let's say I want to get for Apple, Google, Facebook, so for three of them, basically what we would do if we wanted to get Google, we would have to just change that last part of this link to instead of being the Google stock, it would be, well, Apple stock, it would be Google stock and that would be the cost for Google stock in this particular case. What I'm gonna do, I'm gonna create a custom function to make this work. So I'm gonna right click on this thing that I've made and do edit, get back to this Power Query window. So this is the one where I went to there and got the price for this Apple stock. So if I go here, I'm gonna open this queries window. See, we have this document thing. That's what we apparently called it, but then it really doesn't matter what this is called. So I'm gonna right click on that one that gives me this, and then I'm gonna create function out of this. So it says there are no parameters. Yeah, we're fine. We're gonna click create anyways. And it's gonna ask us what's the name of the function. Call it anything you want. I'm gonna call it get stock price. So that's the name of my function. I'm going to hit OK. So what it's going to do is going to give you this thing. So what you want to do at this point, see, it gives me this whole thing with let and everything else. So what I did, I just basically just right clicked on this and I want to create function. And basically I made a function out of it. So now see, this is the function, the second one. So I'm going to click on that function one. And then I'm gonna go here and click on this advanced editor. So that's gonna say, are you sure you wanna continue? Whatever, we're gonna hit okay. That's gonna open this. This is that whole thing that we've created that goes through all those nods and then it basically gets the text for the price. And if you look all the way on top here, see this is the part where we get the URL right here in this web contents. Now what's changing in this URL is instead of being, this being like APL, it goes to like Google ticker and all these other stocks that we might want to do. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna create a parameter for this function. So instead of this parentheses right here, now we can do a parameter. I'm gonna just call that parameter stock, I guess. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna use that over here. Instead of this being hard-coded link, I'm gonna create a concatenated link with using an ampersand and then that parameter that I just did that I'm calling stock. And by that, I want to be able to pass this parameter stock to this function and go get the price for that particular stock. Click done. So see now we have this function here. See it says FX, that's called get stock price. And then on top here, see it accepts parameter stock. And we can test that function over here by basically just providing a parameter and invoking this to see what we get. So if I do something like this and click invoke, that should run that function with that parameter. And see, it went there and it found the price for this stock, which is in this case, Google. And there it is, that invoked function. So that works, so we made a function that we can just change the ticker now and go get the price for it. So now what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna use this in my advantage by first of all, going back and creating a table for me. So for now, I'm just gonna do close and load right there. So that should just close it, so yeah that also loaded that invoked function, which we don't really need. So I'm gonna right click and remove that invoked function. I don't really care about it. Delete, I was just doing that to test that it works. So now I'm gonna go back here. This is the table I made with my stocks that I'm interested in. I'm gonna make a table out of this. So I'm gonna select this, go under insert and make a table. 
This table has a header, so I'm gonna tick this box, hit OK, so that checks that. Now I'm gonna go on top here and rename this table. I'm gonna call it stocks table. Some table name, just no spaces, as usual with table names. So once I have this as a table, now I'm gonna go to my data tab, and then I'm gonna do from table range in my get and transform section. And basically I'm gonna grab that table and put it in my Power Query as well. So that will just return that table with those three stocks. There it is. Now what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna add a new column here to the side that will be the price for each one of those. And the way I'm gonna do that, I'm just gonna go here on top and click Add Column. And what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna create that column by invoking a function. And that function is the function that we just made that gets the price for the ticker. So I'm gonna create invoke custom function. It's gonna bring this box. Now what's the name of the column? I'm gonna call it, yeah, it doesn't matter. Let's call it prices for now. And the function we want to run, if I open this, well, there is only one function we've made. So that's the only one that shows up, get the stock price. And finally, I want to run that function with all of these stock prices in this column stock. So this is where as the parameter, we're gonna choose that stock column, which is that stock column from this table. So I'm gonna hit okay. It's gonna say there's the data privacy rule information is required. We're gonna click continue because we're getting data from an external site. So you'll have to figure out what this is for now. What I'm gonna do, I'm just gonna ignore this and you can decide what it needs to be for you. Hit save. And see what I got is this, and I got this table thing. So I'm gonna click on this little expand. And out of this, I need the text, which is the only one we have anyway. So I'm gonna hit okay. Here we are. See, the prices have loaded for each one of this. So now I want to load this to Excel. So I'm gonna go under home. And in my home tab, I'm gonna go close and load. I wanna close and load this stocks table. These are the items and we got the prices for them. So now what I can do, if I want to pull more items here, I can just go here and add the new stock that I'm interested in. So I'm gonna do AMZN, we'll do Amazon, that's fine. I'm gonna go back here and try to reload this. Refresh. And here we go. Now we have the stock price for that one too. And that should do it for this video. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe. And I'll see you in the next one.